I uh, look forward to get a very comprehensive um, overview of the uh, of your case study. Uh, Andrew, over to you. Thanks, Matthias. And then I'll uh, just try to share my screen here. Hopefully, I can do that successfully. Okay, um, I hope we can see the presentation. Um, somebody let me know if you can't. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you uh, again, Matthias, and, and obviously to, to Michael and, uh, and Punam for organising this, this great forum in difficult circumstances, as we all know. Um, and good afternoon to all. I'm probably between you and your, your lunch, so uh, hopefully I'll, uh, I'll keep your attention. Um, what I want to talk about today primarily is decarbonising cement and lime production um, it, uh, and the application of the Calix technology to that, to that challenge. Um, and probably just to, to follow Peter's opening remarks in his presentation, CCS is, is essential. Um, you know, renewable energy, which is, is growing at a fantastic rate, is, is not on its own going to deal with all of the carbon that, that we as humanity uh, are releasing. So I'll, uh, I'll jump into it. Um, please don't try to read this slide, but we're a publicly listed company, so it's there for that reason. Um, what I want to talk about today and, and you know, in fairly low level from a technical point of view on, on the problem, I think many on the call will be familiar with the problem uh, of CO2 from cement and lime, but I'll, I'll cover that. The Calix core technology again, just at a, at a very introductory level. Um, and the cement story, where do we fit? And um, once we, we have that, uh, those preliminary uh, topics covered, we'll, we'll jump into a bit more detail about low emissions intensity lime and cement, which is what LILAC stands for, LILAC 1, LILAC 2. And um, then I'll just close with a, a couple of other examples of how we're applying our technology for CO2 mitigation. So the problem, um, and as I say, I, I suspect many of you are familiar with this, concrete second most utilized substance on earth after water. And uh, it's uh, various publications, but it's, it's said to be something like 8% of uh, global CO2 emissions, um, something like 2.2 billion tonnes per annum. Um, the challenging aspect of lime and cement production when it comes to CO2 mitigation is that two thirds of the CO2 emissions are unavoidable in that they are a result of changing limestone to lime, uh, which we can see in the, in the graphic here. Um, so irrespective of what is done on the fuel side of this industrial process, there will still be a need to effectively capture the CO2 from the limestone. And, uh, and again, the illustration there uh, shows that. So limestone, you get CO2 from the heating process, but you also get CO2 from, from the, uh, the limestone turning into lime. So how does Calix tackle this? So our core technology, and I'll, I'll just give a very brief uh, story about how this, this came about to where we are now, and then we're clearly not anywhere near the, the end of the journey. But um, it all started when our, our chief scientist, Dr. Mark Skeets, some of whom you, you may be familiar with, um, in 2004, he heard about a, a gentleman in Queensland who had an idea for a new type of kiln. Um, Mark was a semi-retired academic distinguished career then and, and certainly since then um, and he thought well this is interesting I'll go and see him and um, came away feeling he, he was onto something unique. Some 12 months later Calex as a, as a company was born and, and the first patent application was submitted. After some more years moving through batch and then pilot plant development of, of the concept funding was secured to build a demonstration plant at Bacchus Marsh here in Victoria, uh, here in Australia. The plant was built and started operation in 2013, some 12 months or so after I, I joined the company. Um, and uh, to, to my, my um, great delight, it, it, it worked. Um, it's in operation today and we produce magnesium oxide um, from magnesium carbonate 
uh, in that plant. It, it doesn't have a CCU or CCS um, project attached to the CO2 coming from that plant, unfortunately, for various economic and scale reasons, but it, it demonstrates that, that you can provide the CO2 stream. Subsequent development has, has led to the Lilac One reactor, which we'll look at in more detail in Belgium. And, um, and now we also have a fully electric pilot reactor in, um, in Bacchus in Victoria, um, which has is, is also been a substantial development for us. The, the, the kiln is deceptively sort of elegant in its simplicity. Um, in, in the case of lime and cement, the ground limestone or cement meal is fed into the calcina tube here at the top of the image. Um, and that tube is externally heated. Um, can be electricity, can be gas, can be RDF that a lot of cement plants burn. Um, we, we say we're fuel agnostic in terms of how, how our calcina can, can run. And, the, and as the minerals calcine, the CO2 portion is released as a high purity gas stream. It's discharges from the top of the reactor. There's nothing other than the, the cement meal or limestone in the reactor. So that means we produce a high purity CO2 stream, um, greater than 95% in the case of cement meal. Um, why is it not 100%? Because there's other volatiles in there and you get some CO and these things. But, um, but, but essentially it's, it's whatever's in the mineral that, that goes into that reactor. Um, so how does this work with cement production? So here we have a, a, a very simple schematic of a, of a typical cement plant. Um, and we see that uh, the raw meal is, is fed into the top of what's known as a preheater tower. It's typically a series of, of cyclones. Um, hot gases from the rotary kiln, uh, typically supplemented with some additional heat energy and, uh, and, and feed into the bottom of those towers. You get Counter current flow and, uh, and ultimately the, the calcination step or the uh, conversion of the lime stone in the cement meal to lime happens in the, in the bottom sections of that preheated tower before that converted material discharges into the rotary kiln and uh, is turned into cement clinker at typically around 1800 degrees C. Um, the, the combustion gases and the CO2 released from the mineral uh, discharge the gas cleaning and ultimately to a flu stack. This is typically 14 to 33% CO2 in this gas stream, depending upon the type of fuel being used. Um, typical cement plant, it's a million tonnes of clinker per year, and it thus emits about a million tonnes of CO2. Um, some of the, the, I guess, the more advanced plants that are using alternative fuels might, might be down to sort of 850,000 tonnes of CO2 from a million tonnes of clinker. Um, a fairly efficient plant utilises about five gigajoules of energy per tonne of cement produced. Um, cement in Europe is a typical wholesale, wholesale price for about 60 euros a tonne. So as uh, again, as Peter mentioned, to put that number into context, the present ETS price in Europe for CO2 is approximately 60 euros a tonne. So in an unabated an unabated ton of cement would need to double in price to cover the CO cost, CO2 cost today if all the free carbon credits are withdrawn from the cement industry. And the rolling back of those carbon credits has started. Um, I think it should be running at about 2% a year if it stays with the current plan. Um, so CO2 abatement is, is obviously pretty, pretty high on the uh, on the agenda for the boards of the major cement companies around the world. There's, there's two sides to it, of course, as, we, as I mentioned earlier, fuel side abatement. Um, and that this is the area where most advance has been made and most work has gone into in the past, probably as much as 20 years. Um, and that's with substituting your sort of carbon-based fuels for the biomass, um, uh, waste uh, RDF as it's known, or you know, potentially move towards using electricity, no, renewable, of course. Um, and that this is, yeah, this is where a lot of, of work has been done to start, start to bring the CO2 footprint down for cement. The 
CO2 in, in the limestone itself is the other part of that. Um, in this case, there, there are several capture options in play, everything from amines as the sort of most te technically developed and, and, and certainly well known through to some, some you know, really ideas that are still, still probably at, at laboratory scale. Um, the, the Calix direct separation technology, um, it sits there from a, from a technology development point of view, probably second on, on the list, uh, followed by things like calcium, uh, the calcium looping, carbon looping, and, uh, and oxyfuel. Um, and, and if, yeah, of course, uh, it, it, it's it, at one level, it's, it's it, it, the, these ideas are competing, but at the other level, um, if every cement plant was converted um, with one or the other of these technologies by 2050, um, yeah, it, it would still, it still be almost impossible to do from a, a practical um, engineering house a capability point of view around the world. So I think there's plenty of space for more than more than one solution and, and it'll you know be horses for courses. Um, so as it it's, as it is the the you know best known and, and technologically leading um, solution, I just wanted to look at amines and how they would fit into this again, simple schematic of a cement plant, and then look at where where does the, the calyx technology fit. Um, and as I'm sure most of you will appreciate, amines would go on the on the end of the plant and um, and essentially take all of the flue gas um, if you were doing complete um, CO2 capture. Um, it's an end of the pipe solution, of course, um, and has been you know utilised certainly in the power industry on many projects over a number of years. Um, the two advantages of this pathway, as I've mentioned, is technical maturity and a relative ease of adding it to an existing plant. I say relative ease as it does involve adding what is essentially a chemical processing plant to the end of a cement plant. Um, at the risk of offending any, any cement people online, a cement plant is, is, from a chemistry point of view, is probably significantly easier to run than, a, than a, uh, an amine plant. So that, that's, that's certainly you know, something that the industry will, will will be challenged with. Um, and of course, it can deal with both the, the fuel side and the mineral side, CO2. Um, so, you know, why, why isn't everyone doing it now? Well, I think it's, 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 it comes down to, it's expensive and requires additional energy. And I, I appreciate that I'm, I'm now gonna quote some numbers from a 2019 um, report and they're probably, out of date already. Now, in fact, I'm sure they would be out of date, which is great. I mean, we need the costs of all these solutions to come down. So, but anyway, using those numbers, cost estimates of 55 to 189 euros per, per tonne of CO2 avoided. Um, and quite you know, significantly, this, this, this additional energy needed to, to obviously strip the CO2 from the amine um, is estimated at seven gigajoules a tonne. So, Remembering the previous slide, we said a good plant currently uses five gigajoules per tonne. That's, that's sort of a, a doubling of, uh, of the energy requirement for, for a whole of plant solution. Um, so work to do there on, on those aspects, but uh, I, yeah, I'm sure we're all aware there are a lot of people working on better and, and more, more efficient uh, amine based systems. So how do we fit in there with, uh, with the Calyx technology? So essentially, you can see now in this diagram, our, our, our plant replaces the lower part of that preheated tower. Um, not necessarily physically in a retrofit, but in, in terms of the process flow, um, we separate the CO2 from the limestone in, in the cement meal, and then you get a high purity CO2 stream coming, coming off that's, is, essentially capture ready, depending on the specifications for any CCU or CCS process that you're linking into. Um, the, sorry, technical glitch here. 
here where we see the, the advantages here, the CO2 is separated as a pure stream and theoretically no thermal penalty is, is involved. Um, the cost is, is theoretically the, the lowest um, for, that, that, that's available for, for doing that um, as it uses the existing heat sources. Um, there's no additional chemicals required. Uh, of course, there's, there's new capital in, in the Lilac 1, the Lilac 2 um, slides. I'll, I'll talk a little more about that. Um, it, it can be introduced in modules. So this is, this is quite attractive to the cement industry. Um, they don't have to necessarily convert their whole plant at once. Um, and this can be married with potential CCU or CCS opportunities in, in, you know, in their region. Um, and it is easy to electrify, which we are, are doing right now in terms of the, the calciner. The key disadvantage, of course, is it's only addressing the, the process CO2, which is some 60%, depending on the, on the plant of that. And so, you know, ideally still needs to marry with a fuel side solution for, for complete capture. So, as I, sorry, on my slide, as I take that, um, we move into the actual uh, project that, that, that we're working on here. Um, and, and really, I wanted to start with, with just acknowledging, you know, the, the vast array of, of various companies and, and uh, institutions and government, organ uh, government organizations that are supporting this project. Um, it's, it's really been a, a great example of collaborative work. Um, everybody's added some, some value at some point in the process so far and continue to do so. Um, I, I really want to make sure that I acknowledge the, the financial support from the EU government via the Horizon 2020 program, um, which you'll see as I show more detail, it has been significant. And of course, the, 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 you know, the, the great faith that Heidelberg Cement is, is and, and support they're providing by allowing us now not one, but two cement plant sites to, to progress our, our developments. Um, these are not small commitments and they started, you know, even back in 2014, 2015, when discussions started, when, you know, maybe we take for granted the, the pressure that's coming to bear now to address these things, but it wasn't necessarily even in Europe as, as, uh, as obvious a, a thing to be, to be investing time and money in um, back then. So, well, like one, um, was a, was a, as I say, a Horizon 2020 grant was won in 2016, some 12 million euros, and, and the project also included 9 million euros of in-kind support. And its, its objective was to build a pilot plant, which you'll see in the image, you might say, well, that's a big pilot plant, but cement industry is, is huge. Um, to show that um, direct capture of the process-related CO2 was, was feasible. Um, challenges that, that we've, we've worked on and managed to address there. Um, the, the project, the, the plant, um, from, from you know, starting with engineering concept right through to detail engineering and being, being built was, was done on time and, and budget and, and uh, was completed in 2019 and, and has been run since then. Um, Although it's a pilot plant, um, to give you an idea, that tower you're looking at 65 metres tall and, and houses an approximately 30 metre long heated section of, of, of furnace. Um, and, and the tower includes a feed and, and discharge equipment that's, that's obviously associated with handling the, uh, the material. Um, since 2019, we have had successful uh, operation on several limestone, different limestone samples and cement meal from the Lix plant in Belgium where it's located. Um, the, the, the planned R&D program has been completed and, and a lot of design data has, has, has been gathered. Um, the, the plant was, was very successfully run on, on numerous occasions. Um, although we only did achieve 70% of the target throughput rate to date, um, the issues are actually 
in the, particularly the discharge handling, how we return what's very hot uh, cement meal to, to, to the main plant. Um, and, and some, some uh, well, some areas that we can improve on the, on the way we feed the plant as well. And right now that, that, that plant is, uh, is, is actually offline, so to speak, having retrofits done on, on both the top and bottom areas to, uh, to improve those and, and then continue development on that, despite the fact that we're moving to Lilac too. So it's, uh, yeah, we're certainly not anywhere near finished with, with the opportunities and the work um, with this plant. Um, it, it was designed to, to separate 25,000 tonnes per annum of CO2. And as I say, it's, it's to date been run at, at essentially 70% of that rate. Um, I'm very confident that it will demonstrate once we've uh, done these retrofits in the new year that that, that 25,000 tonne per annum um, rate. CO2 in the, in the off stream was measured at greater than 95% on, on numerous occasions, um, which is, is you know, demonstrates we're not getting air ingress into the furnace. And uh, the balance, as I mentioned earlier, is, is a combination of CO and other volatiles that, that are in the cement meal. Um, some measurements on our pilot plant for, for straight limestone have seen CO2 um, concentrations north of even 99%. Um, and uh, very soon, the, the technology roadmap, which is part of the, the overall project, um, will be released to the, to the public. Um, it's, it's, it's actually completed, um, but it has to be signed off by the European Union representatives um, before we can uh, make it public. So just uh, one more quick picture, just to give some, some scale here. So there's a, there's a reactor sitting on the overall cement plant site. And this tall structure next to it, for those that aren't familiar with the cement plant, is actually the preheater, current preheater cyclone stack. Um, so whilst, yes, it looks like a very large piece of um, plant, it's, it's actually similar in scale to, to what it would replace um, in terms of height. Uh, so we'll move on to the main findings and uh, there's a couple of uh, things that are listed here again, so I'll, I'll skip them. I've already spoken about them, but I wanted to, to highlight that safety. So the, the plant can and was operated safely at the temperatures required. Um, this is obviously probably the most important point to demonstrate at, at this point in the, in the development process. Um, it, to, Give that some context. We we do for lime and cement. We have to run that higher temperatures than than our original demonstrator plant here in Australia, which was doing magnesite, which releases the CO two at a lower temperature. Um, the host plant at Licks saw no negative impacts of of taking meal calcined by the Calex technology back into their into their production plant. So that was also very important. Um, the energy required to undertake indirect calcination was not higher than the energy used in the current direct calcination. And it was, was demonstrated by our extensive energy and mass balance work done around the plant when we were doing the trials. Um, and that, again, is a very important uh, you know, point to, to, to be able to demonstrate. I mean, it's not difficult to show that it shouldn't do more than that, theoretically, but uh, demonstrating is a different story. And the heat transfer rate through the tube wall, which you know, of course is, is critical to, to the effectiveness of the technology was also demonstrated um, in this pilot plant to be sufficient to get calcination levels of 85% um, achieved. And, and when we made the modifications based on our, our, our small pilot plant here in Australia, um, we expect to be able to get those rates to 98% uh, calcination. So all in all, a, a, a successful project, and, um, but of course, still a pilot plant in the cement industry scale. It is interesting to note that for many lime production plants, lilac one size is, is really a quite sensible production scale plant. Now, not the biggest lime kiln that, that would have been built, but um, is certainly big enough to really be considered. So. Um, there are 
numerous lime companies right now looking at doing the sort of first commercial demonstrator by having a having a plant built um you know with with a, a ccs or ccu solution attached and that's actually quite often is, is the more challenging part now is finding the right location to talk into one of the, the many developing projects um, around the world so on, on the basis of the fairly early first results in the program um, we were actually approached by the European Union um, team to say let's accelerate discussions on the next scale um, and so rather than waiting for us to finish the program which is only recently happened this year we, we were already in discussions in early 2020 and another project was was put together uh, with an expanded consortia and uh, this one was was uh, to do a number of, of next steps um, the first of which was was simply to uh, to scale up to 100,000 tons per annum of CO2 capacity which would be approximately 20 percent of a typical cement plant's emissions from the limestone um, it also was needed to be an integrated module that demonstrates how to retrofit the technology to existing cement plants. We needed to design a re reproducible module of the actual furnace such that we can, you know, plants can grow from 20 to 40, 60, 80, 100% capture. And in parallel, develop near term business cases for use or storage of the CO2 from the demonstration plant site. Um, here in the image, you can, you can see a 3D layout of the proposed plant, um, which is to be located on another Heidelberg cement site in Hanover in Germany. Um, in here, you'll see again, it's near the existing tower and importantly near the clinker kiln. So the calcine meal can be fed directly into the rotary kiln. So again, moving forward with demonstrating this integration. Um, project budgets, 33 million um, euros, approximately half from another um, Horizon 2020 grant and uh, the other half in kind. So just to quickly show again on the side view, so we've got at the top this preheated cyclone stack. So that's that's new in terms of going from lilac one to lilac two. So we're demonstrating how, how it will be integrated into a plant. Therefore, we need to do hot, hot powder distribution. So we're going to be feeding preheated powder as it would be in a, in a full scale retrofit um, versus cold powder in lilac one. So there's some development and engineering going on there. The furnace now contains four of our reactor tubes. Um, so you can't simply just make the tube bigger due to complicated heat transfer um, issues and 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 so it, it's it's a it's another a new furnace design or a further development and then in the base we we now need to demonstrate we can take that hot calcined cement meal and feed it straight into the rotary kiln again so we don't lose the energy that's already been put into that material and um, one minute one minute left and then we've got some questions okay uh quickly the timeline so all is traveling well you can see we're here getting towards the end of the engine detail engineering and um, in parallel developing the co2 offtake i just quickly touch on this so i, I promised some some costs so the pre-feed study for the first of a kind retrofit integrated is showing we can separate co2 at a cost of around 10 euros per ton extra OPEX above the host plant's operating costs. Again, not fully integrated, but with the integration steps that are planned. Um, and then the compression costs and a CAPEX for the, for, the, for the new plant that would be required, additional 10 to, to 15 euros per tonne. So here we have compressed um, captured uh, carbon at, at 20 to 25 tonnes, uh, euros per tonne of CO2. Um, this is yeah, really just again showing the history. I skipped that. Lots more information at the Lilac specific website in multiple languages. And I won't do both. I had two examples. I'll only just touch on one. So we can electrify our kiln process. Um, and and one example is is reducing the CO2 footprint of 
lithium minerals for uh, for use in batteries. Um, many of you will probably be aware that the, the EU is uh, starting to look at the life cycle carbon footprint of, of batteries and, and particularly batteries for EVs. So decarbonizing the lithium production process is 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 certainly of, of great interest. Um, but I, I might stop there, Matthias, if uh, I'm out of time. Look, Andrew, thank you very much. And, um, and clearly you have uh, demonstrated quite a significant piece of innovation coming out um, from Australia. And we had uh, two questions um, uh, directly to this. And the first question uh, is, now you capture the CO2, uh, the CO2. Uh, what are you doing with that? That's the first question. And then secondly, um, is uh, why is that uh, IP taken up in the European Union and not implemented in Australia? Yep, um, I might take the second question first, if I can, Matthias, because it's pretty quick. The cement industry in Australia is, was simply too small to, to support this. And there was essentially back in 2014, there was no government funding to, uh, to, to, to support this project. So we had to go to Europe to, to, to take this particular development of, of our technology. Um, this is not the only use of our technology, as I just indicated. Um, yeah, so that's that. The, the, yeah, so the CO2 the, yeah, use or, or, or storage is, is, is that parallel challenge. And um, the, the like one project plant will, as I say, we're modifying it to improve it. And it's being looked at for demonstrating um, a potential reuse project in Belgium. Um, I can't say any more than that, but it's, yeah, it, we, you know, there's another project and other partners that are coming that are looking at using that plant as a source of CO2 to demonstrate a reuse or a utilization application. The German plant, our project doesn't include CCS, but it includes the study of options. And again, there's, there's a lot of interest in being able to access that CO2 when we get up and running to, to demonstrate um, CCS, they, they, they're all CCS, oh, well, there might be a utilization project, but so, so yeah, people are coming forward who, who want to sort of, in, in essence, yeah, take up that opportunity. Um, it's, you know, it is a bit of a chicken and egg. Many CCS projects can't progress because they don't have a source of CO2. Um, so, yeah, we, we, we're generating the source and yeah, people are interested in in what they can do with that. Um, yeah, look, that makes it makes a lot of sense. And I, yeah. I think the key takeaway point is uh, that you are able, with in particular with green greenfield cement plants, to uh, decarbonize at a uh, at a pretty significant put it put, put it this way at a probably reasonable price point uh, compared to from where we uh, also capture from other sources, and that's a that's a big tick. And then the utilization and the carbon storage is, of course, depending on many other factors, uh, and they need to be explored probably on a on a on a case by case basis. Yeah, yeah, and and what, very quickly one example which has been announced by Calix is we're starting a study with Tarmac, who are a large lime and cement company on the lime project in the UK that is hooked into the high net project, which many of you are probably familiar with, uh, which is a large CCS um, storage project. So there, they would, that's, that's where the CO2 would go. So, um, okay. and we might also run the calciner with hydrogen. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Look, um, and a very interesting, very interesting topic. And uh, hopefully uh, next time we can also hear more about your electrification of the process. I mean, there's a lot of innovation in the cement sector, which is uh, very good to see. And we look forward to hear more and wishing you all the best with you all.